introduction. So our next speaker is Norman Cohen, and uh, Norman's talk from Imitest, and Norman's talk is called Compensating uh, MTF Measurements for Chart Quality Limitations. Pardon? Oh, laser pointer. Uh, Norman yeah. became interested in photography while growing up near the George yeah. Eastman House yeah. uh, Photographic yeah. Museum in Rochester, New York. Uh, he received his BA in Physics from Brown University in uh, 1965 and his Masters in Physics from Wayne State University in 1969. Uh, he worked in uh, the computer storage industry simulating digital magnetic recording systems and channels from 1967 to 2001, distinguished career. And uh, he founded Imatest LLC in 2003 to develop software <coughs> and test charts to measure the quality of digital imaging systems. So I'll tell you when you've only got five minutes left, but please join okay. me in welcoming Norman. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to be discussing uh, MTF, or sharpness measurements, for digital cameras, and uh, in particular a detail that uh, people have neglected uh, in, in making the measurements. Basically, the standard, and we're talking, of course, full reference measurements are generally made from test charts. And um, the results of the measurement is actually the product of the MTF of each component in the system, which is the test chart, the lens, the image sensor, and whatever sort of uh, image processing you have. Um, now, generally speaking, people have been ignoring the test charts or you follow the manufacturer's instructions and you try to make the chart big enough and good enough, but very little attention has been paid to the quality of the test chart. Um, and people have assumed it has very little effect on the final measurement. But uh, the standards that we use for measurement were developed way back in a historical period when a very high quality, high resolution camera had one million pixels. And at that time, test chart quality didn't matter very much. Uh, if you printed a big test chart, it was likely to be good enough. Um, but now we're in a situation where we're seeing uh, quite significant uh, differences between camera MTF measurements made in different labs and under different conditions. This is particularly important because um, we want to standardize the results to compare them, especially when uh, supply chains are involved. Sometimes we find that charts are used beyond their recommended limits, where almost certainly the MTF is going to be reduced by the effects of the chart. Um, and so we believe that most of the MTF variations we see, certainly not all, but most, are caused by variations in chart quality, by which I generally mean sharpness uh, in this talk. And there's very little literature about it. Um, and some examples that we see where a test chart quality affects the results are almost any test for very high resolution cameras. Um, our largest printers right now, at least, are uh, 44 inches high, so about 44 by 70 inches, uh, are the lar yeah, it's 1.1 meters high, uh, are about the largest prints we can uh, produce. We may get a bigger printer soon, but we're kind of limited, and with some of the new um, 40 plus megapixel cameras, they don't do the greatest job, the inkjet charts, that is. Another area where uh, uh, MTF can be very different from the ideal is in manufacturing test stations, which typically have very little real estate, we need small charts, and we need to understand what is going on with those small charts. Um, so the goals of this work, first of all, to determine the effect of chart quality on camera MTF measurements. Then to develop a procedure for compensating the MTF uh, measurement um, for the chart quality limitations. We also need to find where MTF compensation actually improves the results. So if the chart is really good, um, you don't need MTF compensation. Your, your raw answer should be good enough. If the chart is really quite poor, if you're pushing things very high, then you run into a regime where 
you really can't adequately compensate for it because noise from the chart and other factors um, really make the measurement not uh, so good. <clears throat> so the longer range goals are to enable charts to be used with higher resolution cameras and to improve the consistency of measurements made in uh, different locations. Uh, there'll be another talk, uh, Henry Corrin will be talking about some tests that were conducted by the Camera Phone Image Quality Group um, involving consistency, and uh, we're, well, we have a ways to go. So basically, there are two essential steps in what we're doing. The first is to characterize the chart, and essentially we photograph the slanted edges. We're mainly talking about slanted edge measurements, although this will work with other types of measurements, except you have to worry about the non-linearities, not only of the camera, but of the printer, or the printer driver. Um, so you photograph the chart at a high magnification, uh, which may be as much as one to one, and then you measure the chart MTF, which has units of cycles per object millimeter on the chart. You then fit that measurement to a model. The model has to be a, a good fit, at least in the frequency range where the data is good. Then, to characterize a camera, you photograph the chart and measure the MTF as you would normally do. And then you perform MTF compensation by dividing the measured MTF on the sensor by the model of the chart MTF projected on the image sensor. That's the, the, the key concept. We'll also be determining um, where um, accuracy is good enough and where this works well. Uh, so step one, we have a little rig for um, characterizing the chart. Right now what we're using is a high resolution uh, APS-C camera with fairly small pixels. Uh, a prime macro lens with mechanical focus, that's pretty important because we want to maintain the magnification, just set it and forget it literally. Um, either one, point, 1 to 4 or 1 to 2, um, or let's say 4 times or 2 times, no, 1 quarter or 1 half magnification for inkjet charts. For finer charts, like photographic charts, we, pro we want to go to 1 to 1. That seems to be quite adequate with this um, camera. We have a, a very sturdy support. We use either um, an even backlight or a very nice LED ring light, a cheap thing that I got, but is flicker free. That's important. And we essentially adjust focus by moving the camera up and down with a micrometer. We do not touch the lens because we want to maintain uh, the constant magnification. It's very important to know that. Um, then we measure the chart MTF. <clears throat> we found that different uh, edges, vertical and horizontal edges, tend to have different uh, MTF values. Uh, we're working on fixing that. We think we can reduce that. That's something we, we literally, a lot of these tests are fairly recent, and we're becoming aware of uh, some issues we perhaps neglected uh, in the past. So when we do our measurements, we measure all four orientations on a square, the top, the bottom, the left, and the right of the square. Here's an illustration about how, how a horizontal and vertical edge for this particular printer are different. In particular, the vertical edge has a, a peak, and that peak has to do with the dot pattern that's laid down by the printer. Fortunately, it's well outside our measurement pass pad, so it doesn't really have an effect. We're not going to analyze uh, those frequencies. Um, but we do have to say, all right, we're going to, when we do the model fit, we'll, we'll fit to um, frequencies where we don't have a lot of noise and trouble. And essentially, what we've done is we've come up with a pretty simple model for the MTF of the chart. Now, this is one of any number of possible models. Um, I chose it because it's a good fit to what we've measured. Maybe you could do slightly better with more parameters. And it's simple, only two parameters. Uh, and these uh, parameters are found using an optimizer. Uh, and based on our experience, we fit the optimization to the MTF curve at frequencies where MTF, actually below the first frequency, where MTF is under 30%, or 0.3. And for the purpose of this talk, we'll call that F30. Sometimes we call it MTF30. Um, we will optimize 
um, a match to the uh, uh, function here where f is below f30 and we're going to generally avoid analysis where it's higher. And you'll see that when you do analyze above that frequency, you tend to get a ra rather large boost in noise as well as signal. And so 0.3 seems to be a reasonable number based on our experience. But then what we do is we store the values of A and B for up to four edges in a file that also contains lots of metadata information on how you know, what aperture you used, what magnification, all that stuff, how you acquired uh, the image, the name of the file, etc., etc. Now, that is not actually used in the analysis, but it's pretty important if you want to know what you've done. Um, here's another example of a, a, a fit to um, this function, and this is for an LVT color film chart. I believe it's a Fujichrome color transparency film, and there's an interesting effect in, in uh, certain films where you actually get a chemical sharpening near edges. It has to do with how developers are uh, depleted, and that chemical sharpening causes a little bit of a sharpening bump. It's not very much of one, and it causes a little bit of a bump in the MTF response, and as you can see, this two-parameter model is a pretty decent fit. The uh, cyan is, is the fit. The, uh, black is, is the actual data. So um, we have a pretty good fit below this 0.3 number um, for, for um, uh, the data and the function. Uh, we probably could have gone above 0.3, but what happens, uh, you'll see that if we do, we have to worry about noise enhancement and a few other uh, effects. Um, now the key uh, calculation here is that uh, the MTF compensated for the chart is equal to the MTF measured divided by an MTF that turns out to be the chart MTF projected on the image sensor. <coughs> um, and that is calculated in a fairly simple way. Once, <coughs> basically, once you have the um, MTF of the chart, you rescale the argument to it so that uh, you can uh, read in, um, uh, that you can express it in cycles per pixel on the image sensor. And you do that by uh, starting with the cycles per object millimeter, multiplying it by the magnification, which is typically quite low, well under one for most uh, lens tests, not all, and uh, divide it by the pixel pitch in millimeters per pixel. And when you do this, and what we have done is we've limited it so that if it goes below 0.3, we, we say just leave it at 0.3 so you're not you know, dividing by a, a, a tiny number or effectively multiplying by a big number. Then this equation applies and you've actually compensated your MTF for the chart. There's a lot of um, practical details uh, to pay attention to. So we did a bunch of runs to verify uh, this procedure. And what we did is use kind of an old uh, camera, 10 megapixels, and we chose it because it has a raw output. Um, the raw means you're not going to get varying sharpness based on, on the image itself. Uh, you get more consistency with raw. And um, at 10 megapixels, we expect very good uh, performance for our large charts, not very much compensation but it should work down to some of the smaller charts uh, that we used. And we used a fairly consistent set of um, uh, settings. The lens was set to 50 millimeter equivalent for a 35 camera. <coughs> Aperture was fixed at f4. And the sensor is small enough so that the magnifications for all of our tests are fairly low. So what we expect to get for that was reasonably consistent lens corrections. I think it might have been a little off for the smallest chart, but um, if you use a much larger sensor, the lens would be functioning very differently uh, as you focused it. So uh, it's one of the reasons we chose this old um, uh, Lumix camera. Um, we ran the tests on basically a big uh, the, the collection of test charts that were laying around the test lab, charts that have been printed over several years 
that have been used for various purposes, so new ones, old ones, and we measured these charts individually. Um, so uh, we believe that the measurements, you know, for a production run are going to be pretty stable. But these were done with different printers, uh, some of them probably more than five years old. Um, uh, the charts are uh, two different models of chart. The ESFR is the ISO 12233 2014, our uh, enhanced version. We really only looked at the center uh, region. We also um, did photographic prints and the LVT color film, which is made on kind of a laser drum scanner, a very fine process. In fact, it turned out to be even in ways better than we expected. The fields of view. Uh, ranged over a 10 to 1 size. Uh, so, big variety we had. So, five minutes. Hard five minutes. All right, better move. We've read the image, uh, entered the pixel pitch and magnification, and we analyzed the image without and with uh, MTF compensation. Here are our results for four different situations. We have a, a large inkjet chart, very little difference between the uh, magenta line, which is uncompensated and the um, black line, which is compensated. The, the number we divide by is the, um, uh, the cyan line. With a small chart, there's a much bigger difference. Here's an example for a rather low quality small chart that did not produce reliable results. Um, so we, we wouldn't recommend using that. Finally, the LVT color chart had very little difference. In fact, the compensation slightly reduced the MTF with that chart. Here are some results, typical results, for a batch of uh, chart images from very different kinds of charts, ranging in size from very small LVT to quite large inkjet. And you can see without compensation, there's quite a lot of variation. The sigma here is uh, 255 in terms of uh, line width per picture height. The uh, variation is much lower and the mean is quite a bit higher we believe much more accurate when compensation is applied. Um, we created a tool to go along with this called the Chart Quality Calculator that lets you estimate uh, before you buy the chart even uh, what the quality is likely to be. And for that, you can enter the MTF compensation file for a given a media type, basically printer and, and print media. And you enter these four geometrical parameters. Actually, you enter three of them. The fourth one is calculated. And what you get out of the chart calculator is the MTF on the sensor and the chart suitability. And we have a little a summary here of the chart suitability. I really can't uh, won't spend too much time here. But basically, if the MTF at the camera Nyquist frequency is greater than 0.9, a chart compensation will make very little difference. It doesn't hurt. Um, if it's between 0.7 and 0.9, we definitely recommend it. If it's between 0.3 and 0.7, it's required. Without it, you're going to get very incorrect results. Finally, if the MTF at Nyquist drops below 0.3 or reaches that um, floor for the MTF div, results are not reliable. We don't consider the chart quality to be good enough. Um, limitations of this method not reliable for spatial frequencies where chart MTF drops below 0.3. Uh, not implemented for fish islands because magnification changes over the surface of fish eyes. It boosts noise at high frequencies, particularly above Nyquist, but the analysis of these frequencies is usually not critical, and we can ignore it. And then you have to be very careful with the settings uh, because you need the correct magnification with some of our charts, you enter some geometrical settings and magnification is calculated. And um, uh, you need to make sure the correct compensation file is entered. It's easy to forget these things. Um, finally, uh, conclusions are the MTF compensation improves measurement consistency, doubles the usable uh, camera resolution. Uh, we specify correction files for specific printer media combinations, we don't need individual measurements. And we're using these results to uh, improve the quality of our uh, printed charts. Uh, and there's more uh, detail on this website. Thank you. Thank you.